Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Welcome to the Real Estate Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have somebody from Houston, Texas, Jaime Rodriguez. Thank you so much, man, for uh, taking uh, the invitation and showing up to the podcast, brother. Thanks for the invite. Let's talk about you, man. Where, 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 where are you from? I uh, was born and raised here in Houston. Houston. So you're a Houstonian. Yep. Houston uh, Astros forever. Yep. <laughs> right? Houston Rockets. You go to the games? Oh, yeah. Um, grew up in the Greens Point, Greens Point area. Guns Point. Yeah, Guns Point. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, born and raised there in that area. Went to high school there. Wow. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just been living here in Houston since, since the day I was born, man. Love it. You know that uh, when I, I moved to Houston back in 2005, and that's where I landed. In Greens Point. Oh, yeah? Because my job was there. I used to work in FMC. Okay, yeah. FMC Technologies. Yeah. So um, shout out to FMC. They gave me the opportunity to, to start working, and and, and um, I was working in the shop. Yeah. So I didn't want to live too far from my job because I, I wanted to be early on time. You know, like I, I was coming from the military, and uh, I moved – I was actually living at a hotel of uh, Walter Street in, in 1960. Wow. It, it, I can't remember the name of the hotel, but uh, they pay for it. So I'm like, I'll take it, right? So yeah. I was in that hotel for a good six six to seven months. Uh, so my drive to to work was five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, but, man, it, that was a rough area back then. Oh, yeah. I don't know how it is now. I haven't really hung, been in that area in a while. You don't have my family there anymore? No. Uh, my family lives in Cyprus now. My parents live out in Cyprus. You guys so. upgraded, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, my dad, he's just, I mean, he was born in Mexico. Okay. He was. Uh, he moved here when he was 15. Wow. Yeah, he didn't know any English when he came here, but uh, he graduated top of his class wow. whenever he came over here. So. Wow. So he was a good student. Oh, yeah. He went to college here and everything. He's got his master's degree. Wow, uh, in what? what? What does he do? He's in like, accounting. Accounting, Yeah, okay. for oil and gas. Okay. Yeah, he's got his master's in uh, business administration. And, um, I mean, he's been taking care of my mom, raised me and my, and my sister. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, my mom. Who does he work for? Uh, right now, I'm not sure. He's doing, like, contract jobs now just got because it. of, you know, his so age. 1099 now. now. Yeah, just because of his age and stuff, so he's just doing contract he jobs. He makes more money that way, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean... I learned a lot of the stuff that I, from him, right? Got it. Because he, he raised me, you know, with going to go to college, go to college, go to college, right? Did you go to college? I did. Okay. Yeah, I have a master's degree as well. Oh shit, yeah. man! <laughs> we got an educated person here today. <laughs> what What is your master's on? It's in a uh, business finance. Okay, so yeah. you know a, a thing or two about numbers. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I used to work for oil and gas companies too, doing finance for them. Okay. Uh, the last company that I worked for was Schlumberger. Okay. This was uh, about. Uh, three four years ago. So you, whenever so, I quit my job. So you were you were a slave. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. I know, man. I used to work for Weatherford, so yeah. I know. Uh, I was free in Weatherford, but yeah. people that came from Slumberjay to Weatherford, man, they had nothing good to say. Now nothing against Slumberjay; it's a great yeah, company, yeah, yeah. big company, right? Uh, but um, but yeah. So do you work for Slumberjay? Who do you work for? Uh, did you work for Slumberjay all, all your career? No, or? no. I only worked for them for about like three months but before that i was working for another company based out of florida it's next area energy uh they're based in florida but they have a they have an office here in houston okay i was working for that company pretty much all throughout college got it uh, they paid for my college for my college ed education and all that that's the reason why i stayed there for so long right because they were paying for and, it and you had loyalty right yeah so yeah. i mean it was a good company but um you know that you know about three four years ago it's when i started like you know i didn't i don't want to work for anyone anymore so i was like i was making good money but I was just like you said, I was a slave, right? I didn't want to, I didn't want to be stuck in an office. It was like modern modern day, right? Nine to five, yep. stuck in an office. I didn't want to do that anymore. So that's the reason why I left. Uh, My problem was they let me do whatever the hell I wanted. Yeah. So I couldn't leave like that, man. I was making a <laughs> lot of money uh, as an employee. I was making like two sixty a year or something like that, right? Yeah. And um, I could come in when I wanted. I could leave when I wanted. Nobody even knew I was in the building because I was on a top position in the yeah. company. And, um, <laughs> you know, like, how do you let go of that? It's, it's hard. So, yeah. so I was actually, I started flipping houses in 2008. 
I had a job. I used to work in the in the in offshore. Actually, I, I ran wellheads and trees and all that stuff that that you probably saw numbers about. Yeah. Um, I was the guy on the on the rig putting these things together, and you know, I prog, I you know, I grew up in in in, in positions until I got I got laid off in 2015 uh, when we had the oil and gas mm -hmm. uh, downturn, right? Yeah. And um. That's when I went full time in real estate. But honestly, I thought I made it when I was there, man. I was making yeah. a lot of good money, you know, two sixty a year as an employee. That's a lot of money, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. For an employee, right? Yeah, that takes years and yeah, and hard work to get to that. I was thirty six years old. Yeah, thirty six years old making that kind of money. Yeah, and I was the youngest executive in my group. So the group had. Um, my peers, these guys were all in their fifties and sixties. Yep. I was in my thirties. Yeah. And and I remember my boss, Neil, who was in Scotland, because I reported to a guy that was in another country. Mm -hmm. Uh he was a vice president in the company. Um, um he came to, he would come to me, he said, Hey Ricardo, I I don't know how the hell you got up up here so fast. Yeah. You're you're on your thirties, like Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't even dream about having a position like the one you have right now when I was 30, 35, 36. Um, and, you know, I think Neil was on his late 50s probably or maybe 60-something. Uh, he looked younger. But um, but he managed – his P&L was $3 billion. Mm. Um, so all of us had a little piece of that P&L. So mine right. was $120 million. So – my group was actually not the biggest one, but it was the most profitable. Yeah, because our 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 um, you know our our profit was actually uh, almost forty percent. Yeah, so good. it was a cash flowing cow, dude. Yeah, um, we did services. Uh, we um, our main business was in Brazil. Right. Um, and our client was Petrobras, and and they. They're just a big giant well of the offshore industry. Yeah, right? but I'm 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 surprised that I didn't even know that about you. Yeah, that you were in the oil and gas <laughs> business and you did you know numbers and finance and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So were you like an analyst for Slumbergy or what? What do you do there? Yeah, I was a financial analyst for them. Wow. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm but I'm but I'm glad I'm out of there. So doing real estate now. So how? Okay. So <laughs> when you let's all right. So you went to. College, yep. you got sponsored yep. by by the your ne previous employer, right? Then you went to Slumberjay, right? Yep, that was the last company I worked for. Yeah, uh, that was the last company. Who else did you work for uh, in the oil and gas? Um, Next Era, I was at Next Era for like forever. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you were a career uh, person there for a while. Yeah, but I did I did several positions there. So I actually started. I actually started in their call center. They have a, they have an electric company, Jexa Energy, here in Houston. Yeah, Jexa. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. used it for for power. Yeah. So I started working in their call center. Oh wow. Yeah, selling electricity over the phone. So oh, then, wow. So I, when I was going to college, and then then I when I graduated, then I started moving. What up. year was that? Oh, this was I don't know, probably like ten years ago, something like that. It's been a long. It's been a while. Wow. Yeah. But well, um, you probably got me signed up. <laughs> I yeah, probably did. I, I had Jixa. Uh, yeah. Oh I, yeah. I, I, I did. I had Jexa, Yeah. Yeah. So all right. So you started at Jexa at the call center. Yep. Then you moved on to the oil and gas. Yep. Um, accounting and finance for yep. oil and gas. Yep. And then you ended up working for Slumberjay, yep. but then you were out, right? Yep. What do you do right after Slumberjay? Like. Right after Slumberjay. Yeah. So I was already when I started Slumberjay. I already didn't want to work for anyone anymore. Got it. You yeah. knew that. That's the reason why I left Nextera. Because I was like, you know what? I need something different or whatever, right? So I, I was like, okay, maybe a different company will... Will make... Right. Will, will fill that... Yeah. That thing that you had inside. Yeah. yeah, but it didn't. I was only at Schlumberger for three months. Wow. So the whole time I was at Schlumberger, I was like, I need, to, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here. So that's when I started. Well, before that, I was already like researching real estate and all that stuff and how to how to do it and watching it. youtube for like hours 
<laughs> you know, and then uh, who got you into real estate? Like what? When you watch on YouTube, who got you interested in that? Who were you watching? Um, I was watching a lot of videos from. Um, I think his name was Grant Grant Kemp. I think his name is. He does a lot of. He's in Dallas. Yeah, I yeah. was watching a lot of his stuff. Um, just the knowledge that he was providing about different creative he does more like i think creative he's a stuff. high level investor man like yeah. he, he does a lot of creative stuff yeah. raps notes right. things like that right yeah i haven't done any of that but just that having that knowledge yes. um kind of helps it helped me out with understanding everything Business, yeah. yeah so um so I, right, right when i left schlumberger i didn't i didn't have any i didn't i wanted to do real estate but i didn't i hadn't started like i had i mean i had dabbled into it but i just you know i just quit I just yeah. had enough. You just quit one day. Yeah, I just I quit. said fuck it. Yeah, I left. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I didn't have a plan or anything. I'm just like, you know what? Like, I don't know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. It's gonna work. Right. So yeah, and then I started, you know, started, um, you know, wholesaling, and then um, I uh, I ran into Mike. Oh, I, I Mike. Uh, Mike Ireland. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Shout out Kassanon. to Mike. Yeah. yeah um, he. Uh, I was going online looking at ads and stuff like uh, for jobs like in real estate because like you know what let me let me start working for somebody for yeah. someone right uh, just to I had already had the knowledge but I just needed needed something to you know put, to get my hands on right right so um, he had an ad on Craigslist that he was you know looking for someone in real estate wow no license needed so I was like I'm pretty sure he's wholesaling because I mean. You know, either you're licensed, right, or you're fixing and flipping, or you're wholesaling, right? Right. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this is probably he runs a wholesale business, right? And sure enough, he did. So uh, he does. Um, so I started working for him. Uh, worked for him for about maybe six or seven months. But I told him from the beginning, I was like, "Hey, Mike, look, you know, I eventually want to do my own thing." And he's like, "Yeah, that's that's great." You know, um, we made a lot of money together, and then uh, right before COVID, uh, everything shut down. And I, I told him in February, I was like, hey, Mike, I think I'm ready to do my own thing. And then in March, that's when COVID shut down. Wow. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> wrong, wrong timing or, or good timing. It no, depends, it was good. I mean, depends on how you see it. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it was good. I mean, you know, that's that was the first year when I was by myself. But, um, but no, it went great. I didn't, I didn't let that, you know, let that stop me. So, wow. yeah. Good deal, man. So, so he was kind of like your mentor. To get into the real estate uh, business, yeah. Well, he. I mean, I had. I had. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos before then, so I had a not. A, he didn't. Yes, he. I mean, he. I. I guess he, he helped you. Yeah. He helped me with uh, actually getting into it. Yeah. But we connected really, really well. Like getting you going. He, oh yeah, he got he, you going. Yeah, he. I mean, he's a great guy, dude. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I gotta of, invite him to the podcast. You know, believe it or not, he's yeah. my client. Yeah. We we just did a Zoom call yesterday. Yeah. And I haven't put him on the podcast, so I'm going to do that uh, probably next week. Yeah, I, had a, I mean, he, he trusted me. I had a lot of freedom. I mean, I worked from home. I went on appointments on my, on my own, right, after, you know, the first few, few that we went together. That you went with him, yeah. After that, I was just like, <laughs> just doing, going on my own. And Do you still go on appointments today? Yeah, I still do. So you just do local stuff? Oh, yep, only local yeah wow that's yeah. crazy man you gotta go nationwide dude. <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know it just uh i you know just me me being here i just feel like i have a better i can connect with you know with the sellers 100 yeah I, for sure. I, that's yeah um <laughs> that's uh I, I used to be like that yeah i, I used to go to our appointments and i knew that if i showed up that house was mine. Oh yeah, that's how I am now. You know, yeah. yeah. If, if I showed up, the house was mine, yeah. right? And uh, I don't remember the last time I went on a house. Yeah. And we still do a ton of deals. You yeah. Know? So that's just something that that eventually you'll you'll understand, and you'll be like, man, what did I do this before? <laughs> you know? Because yeah. I mean, how many appointments can you really go in a day in Houston? Right. Maybe three. Oh yeah. I mean, it, and I'm not. It's not Houston, right? I'm going. Outside. Oh yeah. Yeah. Conroe, you're going, Galveston. Yeah, you're going all over. The oh place, yeah. It's right? like, man. It's, yeah. It's a, right. It takes so a long time. it takes a long time. Yeah. So like, if you're going, to, where do you live? Now? I live in Jersey Village area. Like you live in Jersey Village. So, yeah. dude, I used to live there. I used to live yeah. behind. Uh, in 1960, there is a a, a Walmart there. Um, what's the name of that? Uh, Eldridge. Eldridge yeah. in 1960. Yeah. I lived in the complex right behind it. Okay. So 
Uh, and I, I used to buy my trucks over there in Dodge, uh, the Dodge dealership. The one on 1960. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ken, Ken, uh, Ken Baker. That's my uh -huh. guy there. So uh, shout out to Ken. But um, all right. So you and you work with Michael for what, eight months? It was like probably like six or seven months. I think it started in July. And then, yeah, probably like, and I quit in February of the, of the following year. Right. So it was like July 2019. Right. You did half a year, then a couple yeah. of months, and then you yeah. you, you decided to, to grow up, right. basically, yeah. on your own. Right. Um, and are, are you still in, in contact with Michael? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Friends. Yeah. So um, when you went on your own, what was the first thing you did? Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to set myself up. Uh, I'm gonna put do marketing. How, how was how were you marketing at the time? Um, so I was calling myself, cold calling, cold calling. Okay, and then um, I was like, you know what? I can't do cold calling. I mean, I can, but I didn't like it. So I started doing texting. Right. And then I just had been using tech. I've been back texting since since then. Since then, so yeah, so that's two years, two and a half years now. Yeah, that's and I, and I mean, I I try to do some. A little bit of Facebook ads and stuff like that, right? But texting was working. It's working for me. So I just like, you know what? Like, why, why try to do something else if it's working for me? Right. And I'm, and, you know, I'm, at the time I was by myself, so it's not like I had like a like someone to like manage all these different things, right? So what I could manage is that is texting. So that's what I was doing, or that's I'm still doing that now. What kind of systems and processes do you have today, like? Uh, so let's fast forward. Uh, yeah. You know, you you may buy yourself. Like, is it okay if we disclose how much money you made last year? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So last year you made what? Three hundred and some thousand dollars. You said right? Uh, yeah, you know, three hundred eighty-five thousand. Yeah. By yourself? Well, I had a partner last year. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, you yeah. had. A, but, but yeah, it was just basically just right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you put you said your marketing spends was thirty-seven thousand. Thirty-seven thousand. Right? So that was ten percent of what you made. Right. Everything else was just like. You know my salary, right? God, and stuff no, like that. Yeah, but yeah, but it was thirty-seven thousand yeah, to make three hundred eighty-five. You made a lot of money, dude. Because oh, yeah. you Every were dollar doing, making ten dollars. Of course, and yeah. you're making, you're doing everything by yourself, right? So you're not paying an acquisitions guy, right. you're not paying a dispo guy, you're not right. paying, you know, uh, whatever, right? So yeah. it's just you, right? So guys, you can do this shit on your own. Yeah, he's a living example of it, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's why I wanted to interview you because. Um, you know, number one, we're in the same town. We we just met each other at the uh, at the All In event uh, in, in Phoenix, Phoenix yeah. um, that you were attending, and we both were attending. Uh, but number two, you did tell me there that you were a solopreneur. It's yeah. like, no, I'm doing this by myself. I don't have a team, and I got interested on that because I'm like, huh. Most of the guys that I interview now have a team, yeah, and they they've grown, you know. But you are more relatable than the normal person that doesn't have a that, that have a team. Like me, you come to me and say, Ricardo, how many people you got on your team? Twenty six people, right? And you start think, saying, man, that's a lot of people to manage. <laughs> that's a lot of money going out on payrolls and things of that nature. Um, but the guy that's getting started today, you can literally make a lot of money on your own. Oh yeah. Once you master this thing, right? Oh yeah, for sure. But I mean, it takes a lot of De dedication right yes you can't you know half-ass it you no. have to be all in, in into i was I'm, i was all in and doing it so right that's all i feel like i mean everyone's different right but i feel like if you're gonna get started in this you have to go all in on it right that's the only way you're gonna get good at it and, and make now, good money on it you're texting today right yep um you're skip tracing yep um and you're using batch yep batch leads, great yep. company uh i know those guys so shout out to batch um now what other systems that you use uh like in your company like for instance you have core rail do you have uh, what do you what you know, yeah. what gadgets do you have yeah so batch leads is my main thing right because right. I, I skip trace in there i have all my data in there i right. text through there but yes i have i have call rail um you know just whenever people try to call then it just gets forwarded to that um i have constant contact for my buyers for right. my, all my buyers lists in there got it um that's pretty much it um i'm trying to think of what else other things i use i mean that's pretty much it um okay. what crm just some cheap crm it's like 
ten dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, what 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 is it? What is um, it? it's like a s- annoying CRM or something like that. I don't. <laughs> oh, you see, I gotta I gotta show yeah. you mine. It's free. Yeah, mine is free. Yeah, literally, I don't pay for it. Um, and I built it. Yeah. So I'll show you after the podcast what it looks like. Yeah. Um, so what do you think your operation expenses are a month? Right now, because you work out of your house, right? Oh yeah, I work from home. I mean, the only expenses I have is going to be my marketing. That's that's it. What so. kind of uh, and your systems, right? Batch. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and con- constant contact. Right. And, uh, what's the other one you said? Uh, call rail. Call rail. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, my bill on call rail last month was nine hundred dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> it gets expensive. Yeah. Um. Because I have a lot of agents in it, right? Yeah. Um, so. What do you think that runs you a month? Like the all these little gadgets that you that you have. So on batch leads, I pay about like three hundred and fifty dollars per month. That's right. just like the base. Yeah, the, the base, base subscription. Yeah. Yeah, my call rail is like fifty dollars. Right. And, um, my constant contact, I think I have like pay like one hundred and forty forty five dollars. Because of how many buyers you got in there? I have like like almost like nine thousand, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. CRM's ten dollars. Yeah. So you run it about six hundred dollars, seven hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Man. That's your op operational cost. My fixed. Yeah. My fixed cost. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, and you do how many deals a month, roughly, on your own? So I took a month off. Right. But, um, yeah, about, but if you look historically, right? Yeah. About three, three, about three, three, uh, three about a month. About three, three a month. Yep. So, and the average assignment, what do you think it is? Right now, it's uh, fifteen thousand. Right now, so it went down a little bit this year. Just right. Because. So, so you're making forty five thousand bucks on average. Yeah. Per month, uh, and it costs you seven hundred and fifty dollars to run that business. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that's crazy. Yeah. Because look, you know, honestly, um, some people are trying to just make ten thousand a month. You right. follow me? Yeah. A hundred grand a year, right? That 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 was. I remember when I was, I don't know, 21 years old or something like that, I said, oh, if I could make 100 grand a year, I'd be rich. Yeah. Right? You're on track to make half a million, 600,000 this, this year. Right. Um, and you, that's just by yourself. Yeah. That's a lot of money, man. Some some guys that make two or three million, that's what they keep. Yeah. You know, because they keep about 30%. That When you scale... Yeah, you have a more expenses. Right? You got more expenses now, right? right? Yeah. Uh, but that means you're doing less of the work. That that right. you're you're trading, yeah, you're trading money for, for time for time. Yeah, like, I, I that's what I do. I, yeah. like, you know, I don't even you know if I can if I can keep thirty percent of my money, perfect. Yeah. Um, but if you're actually watching this video, guys, and or listening to the podcast, here's somebody that by himself runs his operation with seven hundred fifty bucks a month, bringing three deals a month on average. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Yeah. Uh, some months, there are months that you don't close probably because, right. you know, it's, it's normal. I, I know I know yeah. exactly where you are. Yep. I've been there before. I was yep. that guy. Yeah. I was you a year, a few years ago. Yeah. Um, I just decided to evolve a little bit. That way right. I, I wouldn't be tied <laughs> on to the doing everything by myself. Yeah. Right? Uh, dude, I, had, I, I, I think in 2018 or 19, not far from when you started in real estate. Mm-hmm. I was doing it all by myself. And uh, I had Dennis, but Dennis had exited the company. So sort of kind of like you, like you had a partner and now you're by yourself. Yeah. So I was in your same position back in 2019, but I had 20 deals on the contract and mm. because I was just marketing like crazy, right? Yeah. And... um. One day I bumped into uh, a, a guy. His name is Alex Velasquez. Uh, he used to work for somebody else here in Houston. And, mm-hmm. and he said, uh, Ricardo, I always see you at the events and uh, the networking events locally. And, man, you always got deals. Yeah. And I said, yeah, like I'm always marketing, you know, right. and, and contracting properties. And he goes, "Is how many deals you got? And I said, I don't know, 20, something like that. And he's like, bullshit. And I was like, no, like, why you doubt that? And he's yeah. like, no, I'm working for this other guy, and he's kind of like a big shot, right? He doesn't have that many deals on the contract. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, I'm not, none of my business, right? Like, I don't care what he does. Like, yeah. honestly, I'm not, you know. Um, so 
like a week later, I bumped into him. I used to have an office, uh, a small area, a small office in, at the Canon. It's called. It's not far from here. It's like a co-working space. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, um, and he was there. And I was like, hey, what are you doing here? So he shows up and and uh, he's like, man, you really got 20 deals on the contract? And I was like, dude, let me show you. So I, I took him to the office. I had a an office, man, smaller than this area here. Right? Yeah. Um, I had a whiteboard. A whiteboard is outside now. That whiteboard was full. I didn't have 20. I have like 38 properties on the contract, right? Yeah. He said, man, I can't believe this. Is this real? And I was like, you want to see the contracts, dude, or what? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, bro, this is crazy. And I said, no, like, that's what I do, you know? Yeah. Do you close on all of them? I said, I close on about 90% of them. Yeah. Um, he's like, can I come work for you? And I was like, no, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to poach that guy's team or whatever, even though me and that other guy weren't friends or anything like that. Yeah. I had my morals, you know, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to steal you. He's like, no, I'm quitting anyways. Cause I'm like, I really want to go somewhere where I can make money because I'm not making money where I'm at. Yeah. And I said, well, after you quit, then you can talk to me. Um, and so he quit on Friday. He came to work on Monday, basically. Yeah. Uh, cause he, he called me and said, Hey, I quit. By the way, I'm bringing like, Five guys with me. And I was like, what? It's like, yeah. Like, they all quit. And one of those guys was Josh, the guy that you were yeah, hanging yeah. out with in, in Phoenix, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they all came into my team, but I had already had that pipeline completely built out. Yeah. Uh, and their job was literally to dispose properties and get new properties in. Gotcha. Um, but that's how I started growing a team. Yeah. And it's because I really needed help. Yeah, selling all those deals. Yeah, you know, it, it was. A, a, oh yeah, that's a lot of work having so, that many. <laughs> so it was a lot of work. Um, and I remember those guys. It was uh, Josh. Then he brought his brother Gabriel. Yeah. Um, uh, Alex, Eli. Mm -hmm. Um, I would think. Oh, and AJ. It was five of them. Mm. Um, and and now they're all doing things on their own. You know. Yeah. But I remember when they came in and they saw all those deals, they're like, man, you're lying. And I was like, no, they got it. and you did that all by yourself. And I said, yeah, but I need help. Like, yeah. we need to sell these things now because it takes a lot of work to, For sure. yeah. to sell. And at the time, I was like you. I had a, a, a list, but my buyer's list was probably 40000 maybe. Because mm -hmm. um, some buyers were from Houston and some other ones were from Tampa because I, I had deals oh, in okay. Tampa as well. Yeah, Tampa is a very similar city like Houston. Okay, it's like a sister city. If you fly to Tampa tomorrow to do an appointment, it's the same houses, the same mm. beer and beam. It's it's same like stuff. it's yeah. a copycat of yeah. Houston, right? Same builders, uh, I would assume uh, that were building houses back then. Um, and um, and that's how they they that's how I started that team. And they started cold calling and, and, and selling and buying. And, and Eli was a, a master at renegotiating deals, man. Like, if I give him a deal and we we're making, like, I don't know, 10000 right? I discovered that he was good after the sale. So, mm. like, once we, let's say you you were one of my acquisitions guys, right? right. You locked it up. And you, and you came in and you put a contract and it was ten grand. What I did is I said, hey, Eli, do me a favor, man. Get on the phone with that seller. Ask for a reduction and renegotiate. And he'll go do it. And he'll say, hey, I just renegotiated $20,000 off. I yeah. said, what? <laughs> 20? Yeah. So we went from making 10 to 30. Yeah. And that created a whole different business structure for me because I would just have him renegotiate property. That was his job. Yeah. Uh, then eventually he ended up um, uh, leaving or whatever. But, yeah. um, you know. I don't know what they're up to today, but, but yeah, I, that's how I transitioned from where you are today into start building a team. A team, yeah. And it was because I had a big pipeline. Yeah, I needed to do it. Otherwise, yeah. I was gonna lose a lot of those deals. Yeah. So let's talk about a day today, man. What does a day like a day in your operation look like? Like from when you get up in the morning all the way until you say I'm done. Uh, I mean, I work from home, so it's very, <laughs> you know, just wake up you know, do what I got to do in the morning and just pretty much start texting away. I mean, I do it all from the computer. That's all you need. Right. So, um, what are, what, what do you think is your best times to text? 
I've I've tried it all. I mean, any, any any time works, really. I mean, you never know when people are going to answer. So, I mean, I've texted throughout on you know mornings, afternoons, at night, Saturdays, Sundays. I mean, I actually get I actually get a lot more people to respond on weekends, just because they're not working. Right. So they're at home or whatever. Right. Um, so any time works. You just got to be. You just got to do it. Right. People try to figure out this magic formula, right? Like, oh, when's the best time to call? When's the That's best time to text? Exists, right? Right? Yeah, it doesn't. It's you just, just got to do it. Do like, it just do it. Like, I feel like there's so many people out there, try, like, just like you said, trying to figure out, okay, what is the best way to do it? Stop trying to figure that out. That's that's Just a, do it. That's the nugget right there, guys. Yeah. Just freaking do it, yeah. man. Because you're spending all this time trying to figure it out when you could just be doing it, right? Right. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, so start texting. And then once I'm done texting for the day, I mean, that's pretty much it's pretty much it, depending on, you know, how many people I'm calling or how many appointments I set up or whatever. So now you're sending 3000 text messages per day, right? Yeah. Um, do you send them all before noon and then you just do phone calls in the afternoon or how does that look like? Um, no, I or just, do you just take phone calls as, they, as you go. Yeah, I, I call people as, you know, as soon as I get someone that's inter interested, then I just transition over to the phone as pretty much as fast as I can. Um, do you pre-qualify them by text? I do, okay. but not, but not, very, very basic, right? Um, no, we 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 do a long oh, okay pre-qualification by text. Well, I get I I guess at the beginning I did, but then now I know. Right now I know what you know. For example, if they're telling me they want a hundred thousand, and I go on like just real quick look at Zillow real fast, right? And it's like two hundred thousand. Like, okay. Why am I going to keep bothering asking questions? This guy's asking 100. Zillow says 200, right? Yeah, you're already getting a 50% of right. Zillow estimate. Like, hey, when can I call you? Right. right? Then, because I, I want to, I want to get on the phone with them. That, I like, I like, you know, texting is just to uh, to get the open the, the door, right? The door open. Yeah, yeah, but I want to get on the phone with them. Yeah, we pre-qualify them, right? By text. Yeah. That way, when our because we our system is different than yours in a way, but we do the same thing yeah. at the end of the day, and. What we do is we text, but we get a lot of information. Yeah. About the property, why they're selling, things of that nature, yeah. right? And then we toss that information or we pass that information into the acquisitions person that's gonna make the phone call. Yeah. But now they're armed with a bunch of information. Right. So they know now the condition of the property, they right. know what people are selling, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the other thing is, um, it's like you have more weapons to negotiate when you have all this info up front. Right. So that's why we do it that way. Yeah. You know, but that doesn't mean your way is wrong. Right. Well, uh, that that that's different, right? Because um, yeah, you are the guy. I'm the guy, right? Yeah. I'm doing everything, so um, I don't I don't need to pass that information to someone else because I know eventually I'm gonna I'm the one that's gonna get all that information. Right. But yeah, for sure, if I'm gonna pass that along, so my partner, whenever she was working with me, she was doing the, she was doing a lot of the texting, right? So she was doing a lot of the pre qualification. So then, yes, then she would pass me along all the, inf so she would give me all the information uh, after she pre qualified, right? But if I'm doing it on my own, it's like, well, I'm just gonna call them and get on the phone as soon as I can. You wow. know? Yeah. So and from text to lock up, locking up a contract, have you ever measured the time that it takes you to do that? Most of most of the deals are follow up. Like, um, it's very rare where I connect with someone that day and I'm getting a contract that week. It does happen, um, but most of the deals they're, they take about from the point of contact to closing about on average about three months. That's kind of what it's taking me. Mm. Yeah, man, we we do it faster. Yeah, for us it's like in a week, but there yeah. are deals that take three or four months. Oh yeah, we actually just locked up one that it took us a year. Yeah, a whole oh, yeah. year. Yeah, I'm locking up deals that I'm um, that I've been following up since last year. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there is times where I do get, like you said, a, a deal in the same week, but most of them are coming from just, you know, from following up, following up. So most oh. of my deals are coming from that. So your follow up game is on, is on, you know. Oh yeah, you're on top of it. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. So yeah, that's important, right? Yeah. Because people think they're just gonna get hot leads and lock up deals right away, no. and, and they don't follow up and and that's why they, that's why I, I see man this is what i've seen right cuz look i've seen a lot of wholesalers or people that are getting into the wholesaling business they get in but then they transition into flipping yeah 
or something else because they cannot make the money wholesaling. Yeah. It's not because flipping is better. It's not. Trust right. me. No. It, like, forget that. You're managing contractors. Yeah, it's, it's too different. It's two different animals. Yeah. You have a lot of liability on your head. That's how I started. I, yeah. I was a flipper. And and most people that flip today that were wholesalers in the past is because they could not produce enough deals, yeah. period. And you know why? It's because they didn't follow up. Yeah. Their follow-up game was not on, on, on at the top of their game. Yeah. Um, but I can see why you're having success is because you're very determined on your yeah. follow up. You're like, you know, you know what? That's what I need to do. And it takes me. That's why I'm asking you all these questions and yeah. you're firing them up right away. Cause you know, your shit. Yeah. Hey, it takes <laughs> me from time from texting to locking up a deal three months. Yeah. Bingo. There's a man that knows his numbers. Well, yeah. he, your finance background yeah. probably <laughs> helps a lot with that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, knowing KPIs and things of right. that nature. So, so let's talk about KPIs for a second. Uh, for those of you that don't know what KPI is, key performance indicators, guys. This is what drives your business. Like, you have to know these numbers. How many text messages do you send? What is your cost per contract? What is your cost per lead? What is your, you know, wh how long does it take? On this case, it takes you three months to do a deal uh, or to get a contract, right? right. And then you got to go around and turn around and sell the contract. Oh, no, that, I'm sorry. That was that was from getting it under contract to, to, selling, to it. selling it. It's on three months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, from creating the lead. Yeah, from creating the lead to closing it. To closing like it. Like money in the bank. Money in the bank, three months. Yeah. Okay. So, um, those are key performance indicators, which is something that he's doing very well because he's not, he knows all his matrix. Like, yeah. you know, how many text messages he sends, how many. What, what do you think is the ratio? So, you say your response rate was 20%. Yeah. What do you think is your uh, ratio to... Um, how many text messages to phone calls? Have you ever tracked that? No. Um, that's interesting, man. That should yeah. be good because that's scalable. Yeah. What you do is scalable. Right. You know, like if you know how many messages you send out. Yeah. And then how many phone calls you do. Right. Now you have another indicator. Yeah. And then out of the phone calls, how many contracts you get. Now you have another indicator. So yeah. I highly suggest you do that. Um, uh, and we, we, I should do it as well. Well, I think I do have it. Uh, I do have it in my sheet. I just don't, I have it in my, in my, in my spreadsheet for my numbers. I just don't really pay attention to it. Cause I'm looking at, I'm looking at my cost per contract. That's what I'm kind of, what that's I'm your with. bottom line. Yeah. That's what I'm focusing well, cause on. Cause it's you, it's not, right. you don't have a team, but when right. you have a team, you got to look at all those things. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Cause you know, if you're, if you're acquisitions manager, it's on 20 phone calls. That means it, we have to send X amount of messages. Yeah. For those 20 phone calls. You right. follow me? Yeah. And then how many phone calls? If we know she talks to somebody 20 times, we know we're getting a contract, you right. know? So, um, and, and so it's more predictable when right. you do marketing, right? Yeah. Um, which is the fuel of your business. Yeah. How many records do you think you've skipped trade since you started? I have a 170,000 properties in my database right now. Wow. That's what I do a month. Yeah. Every month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm very, I guess I'm very lean, right? Because I'm, I'm. No, that's good. Yeah. You, but you're local. So right. you're, you're targeting a lot of the same people, yeah, right? Yeah, I am. It's when you go, when you go outside, that's when you start like, oh, yeah. man, you start opening all these new markets. Yeah. That's when the thing, you know, starts. Then you start, you you have to go and keep feeding. Yeah. That monster. Because right. that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm a very lean. I mean, I'm, I'm still getting, I'm still getting deals from, from properties that I've skipped trace since I started like from the very beginning of course because they weren't ready at that time but now they but are now, but now they are so just because they say no the first time I don't disregard that I'm going to text you again probably in the, like the next three months right I, I I do a little different well yeah. because you're doing local that's yeah I'm why. doing local yeah. so so I do nationwide right so yeah. I don't text somebody for another year oh, okay yeah we wait a year because in a year things change yeah um and We've had people that, that actually told us, fuck you, fuck off, this and that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they end up selling us their property at yeah. some point, right? Um, now, the reason why we don't text so fast back to the same record is because we don't want to be marked as spam. Yeah. Because uh, you know how it is when they mark your numbers as spam. It's right. a pain in the ass. You got to yeah, get yeah. another number. And sometimes you don't even know the numbers is marked as spam. Yeah. So you're throwing money on the on the fire pretty much, right. and you don't realize it. 
Um, so when we do that long term like that, uh, you know, another year, maybe sometimes six months or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's that's enough time that passed that they pretty much forgot about you. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like a new conversation. That's the only reason why. Yeah. Um, uh, and but I love buying data because that's what makes your business real bust. Yeah. Uh, your business right now is bulletproof. I can, I can tell you right now that I can produce thirty five contracts of your data. Yeah. If I went and did it all in one month. Yeah. Um, because we get one contract every five thousand messages, so one hundred and seventy thousand records is thirty five contracts. Yeah. Thirty five contracts times fifteen k an assignment is half a million dollars. That's yeah. why you're on track to make 600 grand this year. Right. It's the numbers, they all make sense, yeah. right? It's because we track our matrix 100%. So now any self-development, you do any self-development? Um, I, I mean, I read a few books, but I mean, I listen to more more podcasts. That's self-development. Yeah, more yeah. podcasts than anything. Um, I'm very focused on real estate for the past few years. So that's really, I don't let anything really distract me from that. So right. I've been podcast 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 but what, what but i'm are, doing it right what do you listen to um i mean i listen to everyone <laughs> like really? yeah yeah listen. but who are your favorite guys i really don't have honestly don't have you a don't favorite have no okay. um what i i just like to learn from everyone and then just kind of just pick and choose on what what i what i like what i don't like i do the same exact thing yeah. uh although i do watch uh the real estate disruptors a lot okay because uh, steve Interviews a lot of great yeah. people in there. Uh, shout out to Steve. He's a friend of mine um, and a client. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but in his podcast to me is like a university. Like he's probably this podcast to some other people, right? Yeah. Because uh, we, I interview all different walks of life. It doesn't have to be just wholesalers. You know, yeah. it could be fix and flippers, landlords, yeah. multifamily guys, land guys. Uh, sometimes I interview people that have nothing to do with real estate you know yeah. but they have something else to add to to add value to but i uh, know i i, I ask you about that and how many hours do you think you consume a week on a podcast on podcast on listening to podcasts oh uh, at least like one, at least minimum one hour a day one hour a day yeah for sure yeah so the, yeah. you're doing i'm listening to a lot more uh uh tax podcast now tax why just because the more money you, the more money you're making, right? You're making you money right now, and you're and you're feeling the pain. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so I gotta f start figuring out ways to keep it. Rentals, so, bro. Yeah, you have so, to buy rentals. Yeah, so that, I've been listening to that. Um, this past this past year uh, was my first year of me filing uh, as an S corp. Right. So um, you know, just recently, I just been starting to just okay, how do how do I keep more money how do i just keep it instead of you know obviously paying taxes on it so right i've been listening to a lot of a lot of uh podcasts on you know taxes right now so got it yeah what kind of car do you drive uh tundra t 2013 tundra 2013 pretty yeah. sure it's paid for right uh yeah, pretty much yeah only like two thousand dollars left yeah. to pay on it <laughs> you need to lease a car yeah <laughs> i'm telling you i mean oh yeah yeah for yeah you know it's you either paid on taxes yeah or you drive it on a nice vehicle yeah um, you know, things like that, you know, yeah. th those trips that you did to Phoenix, that's a hundred percent right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm expensing that. I mean, every, my the every event you're coming to the real estate entrepreneurs event. That's a hundred percent right off. Yep. My every, and then now too, like they have a, they have a tax law right now where, you know, if you're on a, 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 by entrepreneur, right. Anywhere you go out to eat, it's a hundred percent right off. Yep. It used to be 50%. No, it's a hundred percent. hundred percent. I think I don't know, probably gonna end it at the end of this year. Um, but so I've been doing that, right? Just it, it's just normal stuff that I'm already doing. I'm just expensing it. Just yeah, but if you enjoy it, like if you yeah. are more aware of it, yeah. Now you can buy the car you always wanted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. I'm, I like BMWs. I yeah. like Mercedes. I like, um, you know, Ferraris. Things like that, right? Yeah. Now you can go and say, you know what? I'm gonna give me that BMW that I wanted, or or uh, Tundra is a nice truck, by the way. It's yeah. a great truck. <laughs> uh, my wife lo loves those Tundras. I I'm a Ram guy, but yeah. she always like get your Tundra, and I was like, no, like I'm a Ram guy. Like yeah. I like the Rams; they're cheaper, <laughs> you know. So, um, but I don't have a truck right now. I just have a car. Um, but you know, going out to eat, and by the way, we're not giving you tax advice, guys. Oh yeah, uh, no. you know, we're, we're, <laughs> that, we're just talking about what we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now you can go get a nice car, right? Yeah. Um, you could start going to more events yeah. around the country, networking, learning yep. what other people are doing. It's a hundred percent write-off. Yeah. 
and you're growing, right? Yeah. You can join probably masterminds. That's yeah. a write-off as well because it's education. You yeah. can hire a mentor, you know. I got like three mentor, mentors right now that are mentoring me in different things that I, that I, that I want to do. Yeah. Uh, Robert Allen is one of them. Shout out to Mr. Robert Allen. Uh, you know, he's the OG godfather of our industry. Yeah. And you're going to see him at the event. Yeah. Um, so what else, what else have you learned uh, from that tax? I'm, I'm curious because I haven't really been learning much lately about that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of small things. I mean, a lot of different things. I mean, the tax, this is so much, right? Yeah. But, um, as, but as if you know these things and you can, you know, start implementing things and just start saving on that. So, you know, for example, you can like pretty much rent out your house to your business yep. for a few days throughout the year, uh, tax free. Um, you can start, you know, I don't know if you have kids, but you can pay like your children a certain amount yep. without having to report that. Um, you know, a lot of stuff is like your meals, things, there's a, so many different things, but, uh, but yeah, back to what you said at the, at, when we first started, this is rentals, right? I don't, I don't own any properties right now, but that's one of the reasons why I'm going to start. Now, do you want to own properties? Cause that's a look, yeah. man, some people have no business in being landlords. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Yeah. I don't like it. Like, yeah. and, they, and I figured that out too late yeah. after I had a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be clear on that because yeah, if yeah. you don't like being a landlord, man, don't freaking do it. Yeah. Find other ways to write <laughs> off, you know, maybe become a passive investor on multifamily apartments and things like that. Right. Yeah. Where you, you get the depreciation and the, all the cost segregation, all that stuff as a passive investor, not actively, you know, managing yeah. people and, and, and things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm finding, I'm, I'm. I don't own any, own any yet, so I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. But the way I'm seeing it is that I'm sourcing deals so cheap, right? So I might as well buy some of them. I don't want to. I don't want to necessarily manage them. I don't want to manage them. Right. Um, but I'm finding them so cheap. Might as well just keep a few of them and then use some of that depreciation to offset some of you know some of the income that I'm making. So, so when I when I was that's in really the only main reason why. I would want to even buy some real the, estate. So then go go yeah. into go into a, a, a multifamily, man. Yeah, it's easier that way. Yeah, well, it's just you know I, I got to take steps, right? I don't know. I mean, I know how to do all the analysis on the apartments. It's the same thing as doing an analysis like an no, oil but well. Your way, your way, yeah. like if you enjoy wholesaling, right? Yeah, and you make good money wholesaling. In my opinion, um, not that there is a better or a, or a, or a worse case or, yeah. or right or wrong or whatever, but if I was if I wanted to become an investor, right, mm -hmm. like a real estate investor, and I wanted to get some of that depreciation on that, man, just become part of a, a, a syndication, right? right? Yeah. Give the money to somebody that's raising capital that, that's legitimate, right, yeah. that you vet. So you got to vet the, 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 the person. We right. have a couple of those guys coming to our event that are legit. Yeah. Uh, one of them is here in Houston. The other one is in Orlando. Um and um, you still get some of that because they're gonna give you a, a form every year as as, as an investor, and yeah. um, that way you don't have to be managing those those the tenants, properties. You yeah. know? <laughs> because even if you put a property manager, that oh, property yeah. manager is gonna, right? You know, is gonna is gonna go and toss back a problem back to you. Yeah. You follow me? So, I mean, just look more into how how that's becoming a passive investor on in some of those syndication deals will help you on a tax situation. That's yeah. what I would probably do if I were you. Yeah. Um, so it's something I'm starting to, you know, look into more um, just because, you know, making more money now. So it's yeah. like, I got to start figuring out ways to keep, no, to and, keep it. And look, man, look, you got to start doing other things. Yeah. Like you see, so if you, let's say you make 600 grand this year, right. And you pay, as a self-employed, you're, you, I mean, you're taxed at the highest br bracket yep. and you don't have a lot of expenses. No, I don't. <laughs> so you're leaving almost 30 to 40% on taxes because of capital gains. I mean, yeah. you, you're, that's short-term money. It gets taxed at a whole different level, right? Yeah. So if you got to go write the IRS a $200,000 check, well, how can you invest those 200 grand now on growing your operation? Right. As a, and now yeah. you're detaching yourself from texting, from making the calls, from doing all oh, yeah. that, from going on appointments. Um, maybe you just go on the appointments that you think that you definitely need to go. Right. Um, 
But now, as opposed to paying the IRS, now you're paying people right. to do. Yep. So uh, you have a problem right now, which is taxes. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, that's a problem that needs to be solved. Um, so, so yeah, I can see you growing a lot bigger now because, because of that, because you already mastered how to make money on wholesaling. Yeah. Now you're like, oh shit, I'm making all this money now. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta figure a way not to pay all these taxes. Right. <laughs> uh, that's a great problem to have, by the way. Yeah. A lot of people wish ha they had your problems, <laughs> right? So, but that's good that you're learning about taxes and all that and, 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 um, and how to, you know, how to be more efficient uh, about keeping some of your your money right yeah do you have um have you opened up self-directed iras and things of that nature no i don't have any of that um i'm just you know just that's, reinvesting it that's one way yeah so um i don't know what the threshold is today i think it's i forget man but uh, offline we can go look it up but yeah. um but i highly suggest you do that do you have any children I do. How many kids? One. One daughter. Fourteen. One, one daughter. Fourteen years old. Yeah. Wow. Are you gonna have any more? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Something I don't really think about. Right. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Are you married today? No, I'm not. You're single. Single. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So if you're single, yeah. Of course you don't. You know, you're not gonna. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm not. Right. Yeah. But even then, if I don't, I have no idea if I'm gonna have more kids or not. I well, don't know. How old are you right now? I'm 34. Oh, you're young, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was 10 years old. I'm going to be 35 when your event starts, on, on the last day of your event. What, when is your birthday? June 26th. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome, man. We'll celebrate it that day. Then. I was like, man, do I really don't want to be stuck in an event for my birthday? But I was like, you know what? That's Dude, fine. that <laughs> event, that weekend, you're yeah. going to party a lot. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. So, uh, yeah. Especially you're coming VIP. So, right. uh, yeah. we're, we got a lot of stuff planned already for that. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, you're 34. You got to open up some self-directed IRAs. Yeah. Uh, maybe like a self-directed 401k or something like that. So that way you can start funneling some money there that, and and then now you grow that tax deferred or tax free. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, but yeah, there's so many, you're going to learn a lot about that stuff during the weekend because uh, we have Horizon Trust coming in. Okay. And they, they can help you set all that stuff up. They'll yeah. tell you what works for you. What the, they know how to do all of that. You right. Know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, that, that's good. And so what do you think is your next step now? Like, um, other than getting some rentals possibly? Um, I do want to, I mean, I do want to hire a few people, okay. um, just because I'm starting to get burnt out doing it all on my yeah. own. Um, so that's kind of what my next step is. Okay. And then kind of try to step back a little bit. Um, but you know, obviously if I'm making more money, if I can step away and but still make money then that's kind of what I'm want to lean, lean towards. Um, that's my next Automation. Step. Yeah. Um, automation or, you know, having a few people, you know, do the calling and the acquisitions and all that stuff. And right. then pretty much just me be there to just put out fires and stuff. That's kind of what I want. I'm starting to get burnt out, honestly. <laughs> it does. It's a lot yeah, of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I yeah. mean, you're doing it all, dude. Like, yeah. Dude, I know exactly what you're doing because I did. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, I'm no different than you are. I, I, yeah. I did it. I, I did the calls. I did the, the lead. Now, at that time, I was doing a lot of mailers. So it was a lot of inbound, inbound, yeah. inbound calls, right? Yeah. Um, and I like that because the inbound calls, they're needing me now, yeah. right? When What you do right now is outbound, right. which is there is a lot of nurturing. Right. That's why it's, you know, you have to follow up and follow up and follow up until bam, you know, you yep. get what you get. So, um, man, that was good, guys. Hey, attendgrowth.com, guys. That's where you go get your tickets. VIP sold out, okay? So you if you want to come VIP, you're going to have to pay retail price, which is 2000 bucks. <laughs> period. Um, he was lucky enough to to get a, a ticket earlier um, and – he actually, you actually got it at retail at the time. I it did. was like fifteen ninety seven. So, yeah. uh, I threw another ticket to you. So yeah. I need to know that name of the person that's coming yeah. uh, that you're gonna invite. Uh, but guys, June 24, 25, 26, at ten growth .com is coming in. Uh, we're gonna have over forty people now on that lineup, um, in between speakers and special guests. Ev people from everywhere in the country are coming to to a ten growth guys. You don't want to miss that 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 event. If you're coming VIP, you're going to be treated. Uh, we're going to go eat dinner. We're going to go a par party at an at a hmm. undisclosed location in between all the VIPs and the speakers and the people that are going to be attending, um, you know, on that level. And and we just released 
guys, we released a fast uh, a starting pass at 197. No excuse on why you're not in that room. And we have another uh, tier that, at 397 that gives you some VIP access, not all of it, because I recognize not everybody's going to go party and, mm -hmm. and want to go eat at the restaurant <laughs> or whatnot. Um, but, guys, I'm looking forward to see you there that weekend at 10 June 24, 25, 26. Make sure you get in that room. Brother, thank you so much for coming in today and tell, tell, telling me uh, and the audience your, your journey. Yeah. And, um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure, brother. I love your story. I think you're doing great things. And now I can see how you're going to grow. And, and, and you figured this thing out already. And, yeah. and now you're getting burned out. You need a little bit of help. Yeah, yeah. So if you're <laughs> looking for a job, he's hiring. <laughs> All right, guys. You'll take care. Bye.